three. Hey, test. you're on. I'm three. All right. Can you hear? I can hear. All right. 2024 scrimmage here at Elmwood. Rams traveling over to Elmwood to take on the Royals here. Beautiful facility. Just be good to track, they said, for this summer.
For us? Uh, yeah, that's the topper there. Can't see here. Not on the roster. Not on the roster. No 40. Well, team, both teams have players <laughs> that don't match or aren't on teams. Well, he's wearing number 40, but he's a bigger boy, so I don't think he's a running back. <laughs> <laughs> Third and eight for the Royals offense. Timeout. Timeout by Elmwood. Coach Bishop going to take a timeout here with 7.26 to go in the opening quarter. Rams with one score and a successful extra point for three. Elmwood has yet to score. So we'll take a brief break, and we'll be back right after this timeout. Mmm, you smell that burger? Ah, it's coming from the Firestone Tavern. For three straight years, Firestone Tavern has brought home the award for best burger in the region. Firestone Tavern is also a go-to for wood-fired pizza, great appetizers, and so, so much more. Chef Aaron and his fantastic staff are here to serve nothing but the best to their customers. Be sure to stop out after the game tonight for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course. In a hurry? Give Firestone Tavern a call at 419-785-4015. Online ordering is also available at FirestoneTavern.com. Firestone Tavern, which is the best to the Tenora student-athletes. Back here at Elmwood. Third and eight for Coach Bishop and the Royals. Under pressure, oh. he's hit the ball. Whew. Goes flying just as he's hit, but for the Rams, Alex Homeyer providing a lot of pressure there. That kind of a, they did it to us, we did it to them, I guess. Nice little blitz there by Homeyer. Got off, off the, the near side. Yeah, got off the end quick there. That pressure, and I'm not sure. Who number 40 was, but he was the closest man. Could, by the, could have reached out and picked that off. Fourth and eight for the Royals. Back in punt formation. A punt for about the 33. A little short line drive kick. It's at about the Tenora 38. Up to field that is number 22, who we don't have. So the Rams take over possession number three for Coach Becker. Second season for Coach Becker, seven and four. Got off to a rough start, but rebounded, had a very nice season, six and one. Tie for a GMC title. Yeah, rough, rough start, but faced uh, yeah, <laughs> to some of the better teams in the area uh, first three weeks. First, without a doubt. First four weeks, actually, right? Yep. Or not one and three, I believe, after the loss to Antwerp. Dominic Graziani, senior in the backfield. Quarterback for the Rams. Josh Lieb was in motion. Hand up up the middle. They have about three, maybe four. Also in the Rams' backfield, not only did they lose their linebacking core, they lost basically all their rushing attack outside of Graziani. With Gus Weiler, Guy Singer, Guy Singer graduating, yep. Devin Llewellyn got a couple calls last year and performed really well. Yeah, had actually, a couple, a couple big games. Abram Jimenez could get some carries this year as well. Play clock's running down here. Just got it off. Raziani throws it. Near oh. side. Pass is intercepted. Went through one defender's hand into another. So interception by Graziani. I think Jacob Bishop was the intended receiver. I'm not sure. Or was it Josh not, Lee? One of the other. I'm not sure. Kind of underthrew that. I'm not sure who it was supposed to be to. Was it overthrown or underthrown? Yeah, exactly. One or the other. <laughs> it's all right. So what a scrimmage is for. Get, get, get that stuff out. Yep. Again, I apologize for the uh, camera work. And Wood takes over. 6.22 to go here. Just past the 50th to North 48. And off over the left side. Decent gain of about four, maybe five for the Royals. Peyton Schaefer. Hopefully that's him. 
has a number to name, so that's a good thing. Rams with one score, and they made extra point. They're on top. Well, they already fixed the score. We're going to 7-0. 7-0. Okay. Let's go with 3 nothing earlier. Scrimmage for the operating crew yeah. as well here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Second down for the Royal. Schaefer busts it across the 40 down to close to the 35. He's going to have a Royals first down. Bar side. Ruff says, come on, fellas. Move those chains. Let's go. <laughs> Moving along, let's go. <laughs> Keith Brown with Dr. AJ, Coach Tony Fairchild here. Dr. Kayla helping with this setup, too. We got our season off right by forgetting our table. So, Coach Fairchild had a table on the back of his truck. So, kind of lined up a little bizarrely here, but we're making it work. Handoff up the middle for a gain of two. Going to bring up second eight. Five, uh, five minutes and three seconds to go here in the opening period. Not, not the first time we've had trouble during setup. That's like every single time we broadcast for like the last five years. So, <laughs> but leave, it, leave it up to the old uh, executive producer down here getting everything yes. set up in about 20 minutes because we were late since I had uh, football practice tonight. It's like so uh, we're, we're someday, to... hopefully, like uh, Miles Holiday and Randy Rowitz, uh, show up, put a headset on, and call games. Not sure how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Second and eight for the Royals from the Rams 35. Handoff off the right side by Schaefer. Gives about three, maybe stretches into the four. It's going to make up second. And about five here. They didn't give as many yards as what I thought. Defensive backfield for the Rams going to see a little change of faces as well. Dominic Graziani, Trent DeLarber back. Jacob Bishop, Owen Farrell back there. And Dylan Shively should see some time. And off up the middle. Maybe to the 30. Maybe a couple. It's going to bring up fourth and about three for the Royals. What a beautiful night, man. Jeez, I thought there was supposed to be a chance of rain this afternoon. And yep. Some team canceled their scrimmage tonight because of severe weather. They, caused, they, they canceled it yeah, like three days ago. <laughs> and this is perfect. <laughs> you can't ask for a better night. A little it's humidity, a little breeze. Yeah. Say, it's about sunny. <laughs> yeah, sunny, beautiful out. Oh, cancel too soon. Fourth and four for the Royals. And off. Big hand off to Schaefer, pitch. Goes through the arms of the running back. Ball's loose in the backfield. He scoops it up. Rams defense surrounds him. And the Rams hold is going to bring up a first down for Tenora on the Elmwood 40. Elmwood looking a little shaky tonight, holding on to the ball here early on. That's her second or third fumble. Yeah. So Graziani comes back out for Tenora. Yeah, I think you'll see Graziani until probably third quarter at least. Maybe series after half or so, right? Yeah. yeah I'd say so. 2.57 to go here in the opening quarter here from Elmwood High School. I didn't see the grounds crew guy that me and Logan chatted with uh, <laughs> a couple years ago when we were over here, but the field looks pretty good. Yeah. He's going to say he always hits it with nitro two weeks before the home opener, so... Graziani, handoff, oh. balls loose, picked up by Elmwood. Oops. I think that's Llewellyn. Devin Llewellyn. I don't know if he didn't get the handoff or when he went through the line, the ball came flying out. Yeah. But one of the leaders that the Rams are looking for from the backfield this season, Devin Llewellyn. First time in a few seasons. Rams really don't have, like, a number one running back coming into the season. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right, though. I think Llewellyn will be the, the call. We'll go to Llewellyn. First and 10 from the Royals, 35. Straight back drop, looks, fires at far side. Pass, oh, through the hands of the receiver. Thought it was going to be intercepted by Bishop. 
And then the receiver for Elmwood, Brady Marches, thought he was going to catch it. On to 249 here in the opening quarter. Rams up 7 0. Second 10 from their own 35 for the Royals. We'll scramble over to the left side. Pass out in the flat. Good enough for a first down. Gain of about uh, 12, we'll call it. Michael must think he's Mike Mag. <laughs> or here to steal my rosters. Oh. <laughs> He said he met him at the fair the other day. I think he broadcasts from the fair, actually, at County. times. Yes. First and 10 Royals from the Rams 23 to 20 and winding here in the opening quarter. 7 nothing Rams. Ball's on the far side hash for the Royals. Straight up middle. Schaefer goes nowhere. May have actually lost a yard. Yeah, lost about a yard. Nice job there by the Rams plugging that hole. Coach Fairchild on camera, doing a fantastic job. Dr. Uh -huh. AJ working the dials on the equipment. I have a few new looks for you people if you're if you're watching. Yes. Um, the, the boys have made some investments in the offseason. Maybe might have some different camera angles and um, might even see later on, might even see a sideline camera. So yeah, Tie it all together. Yeah, we see how it works. We tried it out a little bit uh, in the offseason here and, as AJ plays with it as we're as we're speaking, <laughs> we'll we'll see. Second eleven for the Royals. Ball's in the center of the hash marks. Straight back drop fires out in the flat. Almost a one-handed catch out there by Colton Bradford, senior six-three tight end. Plus it at two ten. Almost had a one-arm grab out there. Couldn't reel it back in. We're up third and long, third and eleven for the Royals. Decent crowd over here. On this Friday night, really disappointed though of what Coach Fairchild. Oh, Elmwood hosed me. I wanted some <laughs> ribeye ribeye sandwiches, man. Those things are. If you've never been to Elmwood, people, those things are the bomb. Like, and the concession stand is not open tonight. Came over here for that reason. They're like twice oh. as big as the bun. Yeah, well, I came over here to watch some football too, but I definitely, <laughs> really, I really wanted a sandwich. Handoff over the right side goes nowhere. Lost couple yards on that. And we got fourth and long, fourth and about 12, 13 for the Royals here. Oh, they're going to give them a little bit of forward progress there. So. Back to the floor 25 as we hit the one-minute mark here on the drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Rams up 7 nothing, courtesy of a 60-yard Dominic Graziani touchdown run. On their first play? On their first play from scrimmage, yes. Kind of reminiscent of last year, Liberty Center started the season. <laughs> the Colton Chambers touchdown pass from yeah. about 80 yards right over the middle. As we're setting the top, the press box of just enough Crestle State. New press box in Edgerton, Coach, uh, Coach Flagel said. So looking forward to that visit next year. Because last year, we were us coaches and everybody were all crammed in. <laughs> crammed in in the rain. In and the rain. <laughs> plastic over, trying to keep the camera dry. And... Um, but, yeah, he says it's super nice. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, but no doubt. We won't be over there this year, so. Nope. One of our favorite places to visit, definitely. Yeah, we went to the games last year, Keith, and uh, Finley is the is a field that confuses me. Um, we went there for the playoff game with uh, Columbus Grove. Yes. I don't I don't know how it's set up because their their bleachers are right up on the tr on the field. The on the visitor side, and the track actually goes behind. It goes behind. And I'm trying to yes. figure out how that works because, well, actually, if you look at this field, uh, <laughs> their track really literally runs right up on the edge of the field Yes, and the corner. And at Finley, it actually dips down in that corner of the end right, zone. Right. Uh, so I suppose you could probably fit it in there if you – Slid this field over. I don't know. Yeah, the left the left corner end zone probably drops a good two yards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No exaggeration. Maybe yeah. more actually. Yeah, it's a, that 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 cone's probably a good pylon height at least uh, lower than the front corner. Fourth and twelve for Elmwood here. Ball's on the Tenora twenty-five. Straight back drop. 
Throws it on the far side. Receiver. Oops. Didn't about, cut his route folks. short enough or long enough. One or the other. But Owen Traxler was the intended receiver. Sorry about that, folks. I was pushing the wrong button. I was zooming out instead of zooming in. Give me, give me the wide angle lens. Zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom in. <laughs> Rams will take over with 31 seconds to go, leading 7-0 here in quarter number one. Looking briefly at the Rams schedule, start out next Friday night will be at Liberty Center. Week two, home versus at Seago. Then the Rams are on the road the next two weeks at Archibald and at Hicksville. The Rams' first GMC game will be September 13th at Hicksville. Graziani takes a snap. Scrambles, far or far side, throws it out there, passes, caught at the 45. Couple man missed all the way down to the 30, still on his feet. All the way down to the 10 yard line. There's a flag back here on the sideline, about the 30 yard line on our side. Not sure, probably no legal proceeding now. Not sure. That was Josh Lieb out there making everybody miss. Let's see what the flag is here. Coach Fairchild will have to tell on, you. Holding on defense. Defensive hold will be declined by Coach Becker. That's <laughs> a good thing because the yard marker guys were already moving. Uh, I don't think the, the, either they knew that or something because they were already trucking down the field. Rams will have first and 10 with 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter from the Elmwood 13. Sorry, Keith, who, who, who caught that? I missed it. I think it was Josh Lieb. Number 11? Yes. Okay. I would give you a paper, but it probably blew away. <laughs> I can't read anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Balls on the far side, hash for the Rams. Two receivers near side, one far side, handoff up the middle. Minimal gain of maybe two, perhaps three on the play. You see the number. That was that looks like Eli, or not Eli, <laughs> Abram Jimenez. That would be the end of the first quarter here at Elmwood. Rams. With a 7 0 lead over the Elmwood Royals. And we'll be back right after this timeout here on Tenor Rams Live. Local farmers, do you need the best crop insurance in the area? If so, Hall Crop Insurance is here to help. Contact Agent Chad Hall at 419 576 6140 for all of your crop insurance needs. Underwriter Nikki Geisinger is also available to assist at 866 341 2767. The staff at Hall Crop Insurance takes pride in their ability to serve their customers. If you need to talk to an agent or have questions about your policy, please give Chatternicki a call. Hall Crop Insurance wishes the best to all Tenora teams this season. We're not up here. All right, back. Getting ready for quarter number two. Rams knocking on the door with a 7 0 lead. First quarter score came at the 10 30 mark. Dominic Graziani took it 60 yards all the way for a score. Elmwood, looking at the Royals, we're going to start out with the home game here next Friday versus Evergreen. It'll be at Eastwood on the 30th. They'll start their September schedule at Lipsick, and they're back home on the 13th versus Ada. Rams break the huddle on the far side. We said a decent crowd here for this Friday night scrimmage. Basically a dress. Dress rehearsal for both games, or both teams here. Graziani, three receivers to the far, one to the near, takes a snap. Throws it out there. Oh. Over the head of the intended receiver out there. Josh Lee. Here, Lee again. I think Lee's been the intended target almost every Graziani pass here thus far. Yeah, there was one early to, to Bishop. Uh, that caught with for about seven yards, six, seven yards. That's true. Rams with the T on their helmet, which they put on there halfway through last year. T on one side of the helmet, the other side is kind of like the Steelers. A logo on one side, no logo on the other. Well, old school, put the number on the other side. 
Right, it'd be like Alabama. <laughs> Just underway here, second quarter. Rams knocking on the door. Third and eight from the 12. Raviondi under pressure. Down he goes. Way back to the 25. Yeah, we're getting beat up on that backside. Third sack for the Royals defense here tonight. Be about a 41-yard field goal attempt for Jacob Bishop. If they try that, which... It's what they're going to. No, they're going to go for yeah, it. They're going to go for it. No, here, no, comes, here comes Jacob. I was going to say, they're kind of lined up. Find the tee. Couldn't find the T. The ball's on the 24. Be about a 41-yarder. Oh, he spotted it at the uh, 31. No wind to help, so... Good snap. Kick is up. And long That's enough, far good. enough, and it's good. Jacob Bishop wow. from 41 yards out gives the Rams a 10-0 lead with the 11.05 to go here. And I guess I probably should have followed that to the goal. Quarter, to the number, <laughs> to the goal quarter number two. <laughs> I was watching the play. All Rams scores this year brought to you by... Oklahoma Tavern, we have a lot of sponsors and stuff we'll run through here in a bit. Don't forget to stop out tomorrow. Meet the teams with the Rams. I think the JV game starts at 5.30. Meet and greet and get a photo with the, uh, members of the golf team, cross country, volleyball, cheer, band. Anybody that has a uniform top on, you can get a photo with tomorrow. August 17th at Tenora. Volleyball game versus Eastwood. Coach Fairchild played Eastwood quite a bit in softball the last few years. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, bumped into them in the district tournament. 10 nothing Rams, 11.05 to go here in quarter number two. So next Friday, we'll be over at Liberty Center. The press box up there with the Liberty Center crew. Fantastic crew over there. Fishing with the ball at the 40. Approaches the kick, right foot booming kick. All the way back to about the three, each kick. This is Jacob's third wow. kick. Each one's gone farther. Get warmed up. Opening kick went to the 10 after the Graziani touchdown run. That one went, I think, to seven or eight. This one all the way back to about the three. Yeah, the two or the three there. Seems like Jacob's been a kicker since a freshman, which he may have been, actually. I think he actually kicked late his freshman year and has been a starter as a sophomore all the way through. Didn't have as many field goal attempts last season as he would like, but... Uh, definitely a solid season, nonetheless, by Jacob. I think he only missed one or two extra points. Yeah, this year, Jacob's going to take another role. He's going to be playing a lot more um, defensive both, back. Both, both sides of the ball, yes. offense and defense. He had 41 extra points last year. His first team, all GMC, is a place kicker. Handoff up the middle for the Royals. Gain of about three, maybe four. Ten nothing Rams here in quarter number two on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Ten nothing with ten forty five and winding. It's funny you talk about we were talking about Jacob Bishop and we were talking to the coaches the other day and uh, talking to Coach Enselman from PH and asked him if they have a kicker this year. He thought they did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he did. Wasn't, wasn't like, sure. Uh, but I, I think, think so. I think we knew. Um, and Coach Fairchild asked Lincoln if he's going to kick. Didn't really get an answer. <laughs> no, I didn't really get an answer. He said he might. He's an athlete. That's all. Well, he might definitely. See Who knows. Second down for the Royals. Offense balls on the ground. I think the Rams scooped it up, nope, or the Royals get it. it back. He missed it. He missed it. Went through his arms. Aiden Helke tried to, but I think uh, quarterback got it back. One of those, he's tried to recover a fumble as he was going by the ball. He's a fishing net out there or something to <laughs> scoop it up. But Rams defense have played very well so far. Through a quarter and a yeah, de quarter. De defensively looking pretty good. Uh, M was helping us a little bit to fumble the ball and not, not secure the ball very well right now. Lost defensive back, Caden Rudzik, as well. He's the first team all GMC selection, along with the linebacking core. Third down and eight from their own 37. 
Straight back drop. Ball comes out here. Knocked away by is that Josh Lee again? Holy moly. Oh, we've got a flag down here. Josh Lee everywhere. How many leaves are there? Just one. <laughs> oh, there's just one playing football. <laughs> Multiple leaves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just one on the field tonight. It's like the Dravises a couple of years ago. Right, More right. Dravises, six Dravises on the field or something. Fourth down. I don't think there were six. I think the, did they ever have three? I think they only had the two. I think Derek and Landon play together, and then Derek and Jacob. No, Jacob was the youngest one, right? Yep. Nine forty-five here in quarter number two. Fourth down for Elmwood. Back to punt. Punt in the air. Caught at the Sonora 30s. They're going to put the 40. So it must go to the 40 automatically. Rams going to start this offensive possession. Leading 10 0. On well, this beautiful Friday night from Elmwood. I'm just thinking of Keith, you know, tonight we're talking about the weather and being nice and sunny and everything. Next week, that, that sun and being warm, you know, at Liberty Center, you're kind of in that little bowl there with the yes. trees around and that new turf. Boy, if it's like this next week, it'll be a little bit muggy down there. Definitely. At least the road's open now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. thank goodness. That opened, I think, Monday. Browns only three receivers near side, one far side. Straight back, drop those out here near side. Through the arms of Jacob Bishop, incomplete. It's the green grass at the 50 here at Elmwood. I had a little mustard on it. Kind of zipped that one in there. As always, broadcast boot tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Or in Green Scoreboard sponsors, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Striker in Israel. Pre-game, signs excavating. Video sponsor, Batten Stevens. Stats, which we don't have stats, but we will. BSN Sports. First downs brought to you by Hall Crop Insurance. Timeouts, Clubhouse Pizza and A. Touchdowns, Oakland Tavern. Post game, Bidlack Insurance and Investments. And your player of the game, Higby Embroidery. Graziani under pressure. Escapes one defender, throws it out here in the flat, intended for Josh Lieb. And intercepted by one of the coaches over here. <laughs> Turns around with the kids and goes, see, it ain't so hard to catch a ball. <laughs> <laughs> nice facility over here at Elmo. Like we said, they just got a new track. Football field looks fantastic. We got the baseball field out here, softball field on the other side of that. You play over here this year, Coach Fairchild, or is that one of those that got rained out? It got rained out. Yep. yep. Looks like a nice little field back there. Yeah, it's a nice field. We played there two years ago and um, stole a win from them in nine innings. With a walk-off home run by Quinn, home, Quinn Horn. Hit one on that cornfield would be quite the shot out there. <laughs> she hit one Across the road. On, she hit one that landed on the road. That's how we won the game. Um, then the next year, they pretty much throttled us. <laughs> so they got their payback for winning an extra innings. Are they the team that had that really good catcher? Was it Samantha Brooks? Was she from Elwood? I uh, think you're... I don't remember. Because she set like a record by most home runs in a week or something. I forget what record she... That was a couple years ago. But I don't know if she was from Elwood. But... So is that the girl from Otsego? No, she she was had all the same bluish-gray colors. So oh, okay. I don't know if it was I'd Elmwood been. or not. I'd been. I don't remember. We get lost sometimes. Yeah, with players. yeah. I want to get our age yeah, kind of stuff. Lucky to remember my own players' Can't names. <laughs> hey, uh, you 12, 12, come here. <laughs> you have a, pull the old coach Gregor. 56, 56, come here, 56. <laughs> Schlegel. Schlegel yeah. was 56. Schlegel was 56. That's all you ever knew him by. I don't think you ever really knew his 56. name. 56. 56. <laughs> Go through school with a number. Hey, 56, how are you? That's good. <laughs> I still call him 56. <laughs> Doing that at a wedding reception not too long ago. Hey, 56. He just started laughing. <laughs> Third and 10 for the Rams offense from their own 40. Jimenez in motion. Takes the handoff on the jet sweep. Gets about two, maybe three. He's going to bring up fourth and long for the Rams. Got Penalty a flag. flag there. Chop block. Watch this. Uh, we usually Chop get block. one or two of those. Yeah. And there we go. <laughs> yep. Just where it was thrown. I was like, well, it's an horse. <laughs> the funny thing about that is, 
We haven't had one of those yet. Honestly, we get one to two of those a game, and I have I very seldom see them called on other teams. Yeah. I don't know if it's maybe I'm sure it is called on other teams, but maybe it just sticks out in our mind that we seem to get the majority of those called against the Rams offensive yeah. line. That's something we're taught or what, I'm not sure, but a couple new coaches on staff for Coach Becker. This season, we'll run through his coaching staff here in a second. Like I said, Coach Becker, 98 graduate. His first team all Ohio defensive lineman in 98 season. Second season, 7-4 and four in his opening season. Bishop back to kick. Standing at the 28 of Tenora. Good snap. Kick. Bishop, a high, booing kick. All the way back. Caught at the... 23? No, 15, 15. 15. I can't I can't see through the wall. Or Coach Sorry. Fairchild. Yeah, <laughs> my, my big head in the way. <laughs> kind of packed in here tonight, folks. A little bit. But Coach Becker, assisted by Casey Helton, Charlie Kelly, Craig Good, Elmore Fredrickson, Brady Bum, Hayden Becker, Jacob Hoshock, Austin Parrish, and had Casey Wolfram down. I don't know if Casey is still helping or not. That was the early release. <laughs> Eight fifty seven to go here in the half. It's ten nothing. Rams on top. Royals gonna start from their own fifteen. A little offense so far from the Royals. Look at some of their numbers last year. So they find the sheet after this play. Shotgun formation. Pass out here in the flat. Caught, but hit immediately out there by, who was that? Jostly. Oh, my word. Kids everywhere. Kids is everywhere tonight. Sophomore Josh Lieb. Josh is definitely going to play a big role, and that's seeing him you know, get busy earlier in, the, in this game. is He's going to be a big impact for the Rams, I believe. If you remember right, nice. Geisinger and those guys all played, this, played linebacker as sophomores, sophomores as well. Yep, yep. So he was just kind of stepping in. But he's stepping in the role. <laughs> seems, <laughs> like he's playing, seems like he's playing more like kind of like a Caden Radzik position, it looks like. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. He's an outside linebacker. but Second 12. Pass over the middle. Bishop has a go in and out of the arms. We have a flag coming in from the secondary. Maybe possibly another, another flag. pass interference, but it didn't look like it. He's got, an op he's got an opportunity to catch the ball, right? Yeah, he basically went to the ball. I don't think he went through the defender. I think that was the call. Yeah. But I guess it's pass interference on the Rams. So, be first down for the Royals. As we said, the Royals... Although they were three and eight last year, didn't make the playoffs. It finished with 17 points per game on offense average. He gave up 38 points per game, 254 total yards of offense for Elmwood. 124 yards rushing. Rams got that, I think. 130 passing. And the fumble is recovered. It is recovered by the Rams. The Rams. Not sure who scooped that up. It was. Number eight. Who's number, number eight? eight. <laughs> See who we are, number eight. That would be Kobe Baum. Baum. Kobe Baum. Brady over here, one of the assistant coaches. A teaching job in Eden this season for the 24-25 school year. Ooh, that's a hefty drive after after school to get over. That's about 40 minutes probably. For Tenora. <laughs> yes. So the Rams have good field position here. 8.03 to go in the half. Balls on the 18. They're up 10 nothing. And off over the left side of the offense. Abram Jimenez, I believe, got the carry on that. We'll be a little more organized next week, I assure you, we'll have a little more room. <laughs> <laughs> looking over me, looking around the corner, looking over the cameras. What we don't do to bring Tenor Rams sports to people at home. Yeah. 
They only knew. They only knew. We need to have one of those like uh, <laughs> documentaries and have yeah, follow, somebody follow us around. <laughs> yes. Be surprised. And off fake to Jovanez. Graziani is going to take it over the near side. Hit at the 10. All the way down to the 5. See where they spot the ball. And they spot it right at the 5. A first and goal for the Rams from the 5. 7-15 and winding here in the half. Rams up 10-0. Graziani breaks the huddle with the team. Three receivers to the far side, one near side. And in motion, Graziani straight back, looks, looks, fires out there in the flat. Oops, dropped by, not sure if that's Abram or not. Abram's listed as 23. There's not a 22 on the roster, so I'm not actually sure if that's Abram or 23 just ran off. off. So maybe Abram is out there at 23, but I'm not. Say 23 just ran off. Okay, so. He's on the sideline. 22 now. is not on our roster. These are practice jerseys, so we'll next week have everything in line. Second goal from the five. I don't think any time ran off the clock. Well, 7 12. Um, handoff up the middle. Piles getting pushed. Close to the goal line. I don't think he got in. About two. to the two. Yeah. Two and a half. Third down. Third and goal from the three. Long three, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's one of the three. Definitely within Jacob Bishop field goal range if we Definitely. don't get it here. But. Jacob with a 41-yarder earlier to give the Rams a 10 nothing lead. And Start of the fourth or the fourth quarter, second quarter. That's not wind assisted either. The flags are hanging straight down. Radiani takes a snap. Quarterback keeper rolls it right up the middle, and he's into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown run. Dominic Graziani gives the Rams a 16-0 lead here with 6:28 to go. The second quarter. Second touchdown run of the night for Graziani. Bishop on for the extra point. We said Jacob with 41 extra points made last year. Kick is up. And that's good. Rams 17. Elmwood nothing. 6.28 to go here in the half. And we'll be back right after this timeout here on to Nora Rams Live. Did you know that we have a shop right here in Defiance that specializes in gas and electric golf cart repair? Aftershock Carts is a full service shop and has been building, customizing, and repairing golf carts for years. Aftershock Carts has a huge supply of new Trojan batteries and any part you need for your cart. Located at 8144 State Route 15 in Defiance, 784 1806, and online at aftershockcarts.com. Stop out and look for the building with the cart on top. For any of your auto body or collision needs, be sure to check out Bat and Stevens Body Shop. Voted the number one body shop in Northwest Ohio by Crescent News Readers. Give them a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate. Brother Tacos works endlessly with the help of their kids to bring you the best authentic Mexican food to Defiance and the surrounding areas. Brother Taco is a family-owned and operated catering service and a pop-up food vendor. No matter where we are or how we're serving, we have one goal in mind. All right. We are back. Here, 6.28 to go in the half. Rams 17. And what Royals nothing. Here on Tenor Rams Live, Keith Brown, Coach Fairchild, Dr. AJ here with you. Dr. Kale assisting off to the side. Jacob Bishop with the ball. See if he can't kick this one into the end zone. Each kick has progressed further inside the 10. So we'll see if he can't, Jacob can't hit this one to the goal line. Approaches the ball to 40. Line drive kick. Caught. From the five. From the five. The Royals will start at the 40, I believe, is where we're going to place it. 
But the last time we're over here was in 2022. Rams had a playoff game here versus the Elmwood Royals. And what a game that was. Rams sure. thought they had, you know, they were playing very well middle of the fourth quarter. Then the Royals avalanche hit. Yeah. And they just scored about 21 points and I'm going to say about three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All started with an interception, and yep. from that wheel, that point on, the wheels were off for the Rams. Hayden Wickard, Mason Mossbarger, uh, Mason Oliver, part of that team. Yeah. He was all Ohio running back, 2,054 yards, rushing 24 touchdowns. He left Elmwood as the all-time career rushing leader, 5,851 yards, rushing 67 touchdown runs. That team averaged 41 points a game and close to 500 yards of total offense. They lost to Liberty Center in the, the regional 15 finals. I think Coach Fairchild and the crew were there, actually. We, we were there. Uh, that was the game that was so cold that I couldn't feel my lips. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't talk. You guys um, must have been on the sidelines. Yeah, we were down on the sidelines. And Elmwood had the uh, these gigantic fire fire breathing dragons on their sideline and <laughs> Liberty Center I think had one salamander thing oh, boy. There. Was like, yeah. <laughs> Elmwood brought these two gigantic things in here but I just remember walking up and down the sideline the wind was so cold you start talking and next thing you know you're not talking right because your lips were so, so, so like, numb uh, Audrey from uh, Chris's Vacation yeah. uh, her eyes are frozen Clark her she'll see you later she'll, she'll, she'll see you later <laughs> third and three from their own 42 is the Royals 5.48 to go here in the half. And off up the middle, about the 45, maybe the 46 for the Royals. We're 17, not on a roster. In a half, we'll give you a rundown of the scoring. We'll do a little season preview for the Rams and look at a GMC preview for us and not sure how long the halftime is going to be, but we'll kill a few minutes talking about some of that stuff. So, it was a first down for Elmwood. So it's first and ten from their own forty-five. Quarterback drops back, flush to the far side, pass out there, knocked away. A oh. couple of Ram defenders over there goes flying into the Rams bench. Good defense. Rams have played very good here in the first half. Defensively and offensively, really. Yeah. Offensively, other than other than a few times that Graziano's kind of got hit from behind, that's about the only thing they really got to figure out at halftime. Got the wrong scheme or something's not looking right there, so we'll, we'll fix that. We'll fix that. Easy fix. Yeah. Just a little bit of coming in and say, who you who you blocking? Who you blocking? That's it. Figure that out. Like defense on <laughs> basketball court. <laughs> who you got? Second 10 pitch out to the far side. Gain of about three on the play for the Royals. Number 17 also not on the roster. Under five to go here. Seems like this quarter is taking forever. It's like the first one went by pretty quick. It this is. Just seems like it's taking a while. 17 nothing to Nora. 430 and winding here. Ball's on the far side hash on this third down, third and seven. Pitch to Schaefer, cuts it up. Submarined by one of the Rams. 42. See who that is. Gotta sift through all these papers each time for a roster. <laughs> I usually have them taped to the counter. We don't have a counter. 42, we don't have them. No him. No, not sure who you are, but that's a really good play. On the sideline right now. <laughs> Going out. Got a stinger. No, he's fine. Coach Hayden Becker over there. Comes off. Goes talks to Coach Becker. Fourth down for the Royals offense. Fourth and seven. Also over there is Coach Casey Hilton. Time offensive coordinator. Timeout on the field here, 3.42 to go, 17 nothing Rams, and see what the Royals want to do on this fourth 
Uh, let's just go for it. So and scrimmage. Seven. Scrimmage, right. They were already punted about five, six times. So. Yeah. One thing about here, let's drive to Elmwood. Basically, you tie a rope to your steering wheel and just set it. <laughs> take a nap for about 50 minutes. Set a timer for about 49 minutes. I need a super cruise. Yes. Turn <laughs> to the right and drive another couple miles. Do a lot of corn. And once you drive through the mini cornfields, then there's a school. Actually, you see the light towers. Yeah. And you're like, hey, there's the ball field. Yeah. <laughs> Probably looks really awesome at night driving here. Yeah, well, it's one of those things where I was heading over here, and, and I'm used to where you turn off a 281, but um, when you get to the school, I'm used to seeing this in the springtime. There's no corn Yeah, there's the no corn anyway. It's <laughs> <laughs> flat. <laughs> or clear, I guess. Yeah. Two receivers on the far side. Two backs in the backfield, straight back drop for the quarterback. He throws it down the middle. Diving catch out there. By the Royals, that was Brady Marches, a six-foot senior wide receiver, slice defensive back, two-year letter winner. Nice diving catch out there on that fourth and four. Walks down to 3.30 and winding here. 17-0 Rams. Best drive of the half for the Royals by far. Ball's on the far side hash. Handoff up the middle. Our Royals, the run game just not there. It's Rams are kind of handling the defensive line. So second and long. Second and nine. That looks like Carter Radzik. I'm not sure. Sure. Carter was first team all GMC as a freshman. Yeah, he was hurt um, a little while back, and I'm not sure if he's been cleared. It sort of looks like him, his body language. Second nine balls in the center of the hashes. Inside handoff. Oh. Ball's loose. Scooped up oh. by the Rams. Actually, never got to hand it off. He yeah. went to hand it off, and I think he kept it and got absolutely drilled. And number 42. 42, scoop and score, baby. Good scoop job score. there by him. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, my camera keeps going sideways, I think. Uh, bad job by the camera operator. We got a scab com camera operator tonight. That's all right. <laughs> it looks all right on, on there, AJ. I'm fine. I'm just... Looks like it's crooked on my screen. Looks good. 234 to go. See if Rats can put some points on the board before the halftime. Two-minute drill. Far side hash. Graziani under pressure. Throws it out here in the flat. Jacob Bishop with the catch at the 40. Makes a man miss. Gets to the 45 to the 46, maybe 47-yard line. Nice throw and catch. Graziani felt the pressure. Fired out there to Bishop. Bishop made the catch. And they did spot it at the Tenora 47. It'll be second down and four as we hit the two-minute mark here. Rams with the chance to their two-minute offense. They got one or two receivers near side, three far side, empty backfield. Graziani under pressure. Going to tuck and run, gets to the 50-45. Wisely steps out of bounds. Don't need Dom taking a pop here right before, week before the season opener. Yeah. Outside. Got a first down out of it, so. Step out of bounds. Get the clock. Get the clock stopped, and no reason to take any unnecessary pops at this point. On the 145, first and ten, Rams from the 46 of Elmwood. Rams up 17, nothing. Curtis, you have two dominant Graziani runs, one from 60 and one from three. Jacob Bishop, Bishop, 41-yard field goal sandwiched in there. Graziani definitely under pressure. Gets it out there. Josh Lieb with the catch. Minimal gain, however, for Josh. Three yards on the reception. They're going to bring up second and seven. Got a lot of work to do up front, Keith. Uh, Dom didn't really have time to barely just get that out. He, as soon as he turned, he was under pressure. So Graham's going to have to fix that up front. Clock continues to run on the second and eight down to 120. Balls on the 45 of Elmwood. Pressure again. 
Graziani throws it out there to Ooh. flat, almost intercepted. Stops the clock. Brady marches. Dangerous pass, so if he throws it out there like it's a little more air, he, he's going to take that to the house. Dom was just trying to get rid of it. Unfortunately, if you're going to get rid of it, go to the short side of the field and just launch it. It'll be third down. Long, long ways to throw it from over there to clear across the field to get that thing out of bounds so nobody can catch it. Third and eight for the Rams offense. One eleven to go. Two receivers near, too far, empty backfield. Graziani straight back drop under pressure again. He's going to step up and run. Flag comes flying in from the side judge. He's going to have a hold on the Rams. See if Coach Bishop from the Royals wants to accept or decline that. I think I'd probably decline that be fourth down. I don't know, you're backing up 10. They do decline it, so it will be fourth down. Fourth and eight for Tenora. Yeah, 105. Spotted, spotted the ball at the down marker instead of the, not at the down marker. Yeah, they got to move it, <laughs> move it up so a couple started, yards. They put it at the sticks. Now Preseason the for the refs, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had me confused. They were like, oh, maybe it, maybe it gets placed there. I was lost. Bishop back to kick for Tenora. Jacob right at his 40. Going to kick from about the 40. Five, all of a sudden done. Play clock rolling. Good snap. Bishop's kick. High end over end kick. Elmwood will take over. 53 seconds to go here in the half. So at halftime, we'll give you some first half highlights. We'll run through GMC preview, give you a little bit of a Rams preview, and Run some commercials. Thank our fantastic sponsors. And I'm so disappointed. There's no ham. There's no sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> You're tasting those on the way over. Oh, oh my gosh! I sure Mouth was. was my <laughs> belly's growling now. Mouth it's was like, hey. <laughs> uh, My belly's going. Hey, dude! You said you were going to feed me when you got there. No. Yeah, you, know, you can't even get a drink. Uh, <laughs> drinks available. <laughs> on the sidelines, give me some Gatorade. Uh, balls at the Homewood Ten. Balls on the far side hash. Quarterback throws it out here in the flat. Oh, Jacob Bishop oh. was about a step away from picking that off and taking it into the end zone. Passes a little short of the intended receiver. Bishop was right there. Second and 10 for the Royals. 49 seconds to go in the half. Rams up 17 0 here. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Pass out here. Pass oh. almost intercepted again. That Lieb. was by Josh Lieb. Yeah, Lieb out got that one. If the throw had been on the money, he would have had that. It was just a little high. So it was a little high, right. He jumped coming off his hands. So it'll be third down for the Royals offense. I think the Royals to just take a dive play here, or are they going to try to throw the ball? It's a scrimmage. Might as well, right? Might as well try. What is four? Work your two-minute drill. and Three receivers on the near side, one far side, one back in the backfield. That was Schaefer in the backfield. Quarterback rolls out, fires near side, has a man out there, caught! The 40, 45, 50, 40, 30, 20, down to the five yard line. Wow. So the Royals offense. I guess you don't just take a dive play there. That's why. Does not take the dive play. <laughs> Almost always going to be intercepted. That's Marcus Mossbarger with the reception. And that was about a 85-yarder. Got some wheels. Pitch and catch. Almost unplugged us. <laughs> yeah, he's got some wheels there. Uh, took Bishop to catch him. Bishop's pretty quick. Timeout by Elmwood and Coach Bishop. 
32 seconds to go in the half, basically just to give his team a breather, I think, more I than think, anything. Uh, actually, Coach Becker took that time out. Oh, did he? Yeah. Give his defense a breather then. Yeah. Regardless, the team needs a breather after yeah. that. Yeah. Just ran 80 yards. They need some gas. 17-0, Tenora, 32 seconds to go here. First and five from the Tenora, five for the Elmwood offense. Deepest, the Royals have gone here in the first half. Prior to this, I think the deepest they'd been was about the 25. About so. the 25, yes. It took about an 85-yard pass to do this. <laughs> so Rams defense has actually played and performed very well. See if the Rams can hold here, keep Elmwood out of the end zone. Now, two backs in the backfield, one receiver to each side. Mossberg, who just made the catch, is the far side receiver, I believe. Hand off up the middle. Does not get in. Hurry up offense by the Royals here. Second about two, or second goal. Try to pound it in. Rams defense stands him up again. Ball goes flying. But whistles are blowing. I'm going to say that forward progress had stopped. The clock's running. Seven. Now Wood quarterback takes a fourth down. Step back and spikes it. Three seconds on the clock. That was an exciting last 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Rams up 17 nothing. Three seconds to go. It's going to be fourth and goal. From the four or three, can't see. How about the two, maybe. Maybe it says, two. It says ball on the four, but it looks like it's about the two. Yeah, no, it's nothing, not the four. Even with the referee standing, uh, he's not about the two. So the, let's see what Elmwood does. I think they're just going to fake this here, so make them spread them out, and then they're going to try to pound it up the middle. Oh, they are going to run it out there. Takes a snap, throws it in the flat. Ball is knocked away by Graziani and through the arms of the Elmwood receiver. So the Rams defense does hold. And that's the end of the first half over here at Elmwood with the Tenor Rams leading the Elmwood Royals by a score of 17-0. And we'll take a couple breaks and we'll be back and give you a first half review and we'll give you a preview of the Rams' upcoming season and a GMC preview here. And we'll do that after we take a couple breaks. And we'll be back right after that here on Tenor Rams Live. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419-576-8940. Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Ladies, are you looking for a new hairstyle? What about some new fancy nails? Jenny Bidlack and her fantastic crew at Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get you all fancied up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of fantastic services, including haircuts, highlights, coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you are their number one priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or simply visit their Facebook page for online booking. Cut and Polish Salon owner Jenny Bidlack and her staff say, Go Rams! Who has the best pizza in the area? Well, for four of the last five years, it's Drop Zone Pizzeria. All right, JV will take the field here for quarter number three. 
But first half scoring went like this in the varsity action. Dominic Graziani, first play from scrimmage, went 60 yards. Rams up 7-0 after the Jacob Bishop extra point. Bishop came back right at the start of the second quarter, hit a 41-yard field goal, probably could have made it from 45 or 46. Rams led 10-0. And then 6.28 to go in the second quarter. Dominic Graziani took it in from three yards out. Bishop again supplied the extra point. Rams up 17-0. First half, Rams offense sputtered a bit. Put the ball on the ground a time or two. Had an interception. Protection a little bit off. But overall, offense performed very well. And defensively, we thought the Rams performed extremely well up until the Final play, which Elmwood gained 85 yards, which they probably didn't have 85 total yards in the entire first half. But Rams defense came up with a fourth, uh, fourth and goal stand for about the two or three, and overall performance was, I would say, probably a solid B in the first half for the Rams offense, defense, special teams. Jacob Bishop actually probably deserves an A plus. <laughs> Kicked the ball on the kickoffs inside the 10. Every single time, made 41-yard field goal and made his two extra points. So, Coach Fairchild, first half. Yeah, I think you said it, Keith. The Rams, the play, Rams played pretty well, both sides of the ball. Offensively, yeah, just those few um, plays where they, you know, not holding protection. And, um, you know, that we'll see Rams didn't really run the ball a whole lot other than Dominic Graziani as far as getting yardage. Um, so we'll see how they progress on that. But offensively, that's really about the only thing I think they really need to fix is the, is the protection package. Yep. Uh, defensively, played fantastic, like you said, other than the, than the one play. Now, like I said, Elmwood did help us out a little bit with some miscues and dropping the ball on some fumbles. But um, other than that, I thought the Rams did a really nice job. I agree. That's why you play a scrimmage, right? Just yeah, you got to figure out what you got to fix, what you got to work on. And you know, you're going into a – very good Liberty Center team yeah. next Friday night who graduated quite a few but still has a lot of talented kids returning. Which we brought up to Coach Moeller during our coaches show last year. Even though those freshmen and sophomores didn't really play a lot in, in the games as, as Liberty Center proceeded throughout the playoffs and you know, deep to the state finals, all those kids got all those practices. So if you practice, say, three oh, yeah. times a week at least – you know, you're still probably lifting weights and, and whatnot, where all the other programs, they've been shut down for, you know, a month. Right. So you're getting in 15, 18, 20 extra practices. So those kids, even though for Liberty Center are freshmen and sophomores and didn't really get a lot of, of playing time, they got all those practices. Yeah, because that's uh, – even Coach Muller mentioned that they were doing um, – you know, they were the, the first-teamers were only taking so many snaps. You know, they were trying to stay healthy the yep. longer season, so they were only taking, you know – handful of snaps in those practices so um, at that point it's just basically stay healthy keep resting and and yeah the younger kids were getting some repetition so that's always good for them yeah we got to see garrison cruz last year start one of the regional semifinals or one of those games and he's, he's a freshman yeah looking at him you wouldn't think he's a freshman he looks like he's about 6 3 2 25 solid so he's supposed to get some time running the ball this year too from what coach Muller said so yeah. um well, the Muller boy was in there as Thomas, well. Thomas, yeah, Thomas know, Muller uh, was in there. So he was a sophomore last year. He's a yeah sophomore last year. Yeah. He'd be a junior this year. Yeah, so did, did a nice job for him as well. So yep. yeah, they're gonna they're de they're definitely not gonna be hurting. I don't think they're gonna reload. And I <laughs> counted their roster earlier this week at work. Uh, seventy two. Jeez, seventy two. And I think Defiance I've heard has like what did Coach Cooper said. Did he say like mid forties? Forties, I think he said. So Liberty Center has seventy two, and. Mean, uh, program there coach Muller's doing a fantastic job and whatever he's doing to get the kids to come out yep. and play it yep he's definitely building that um mindset that everybody talks about with the mac mindset their kids just go play football and that's um definitely you know yeah so anybody out there watching listening um head on over to liberty center uh next friday night you've never been to a game of liberty center you've seen like friday night lights the the football movie or you watch friday night lights the tv show Everything about Liberty Center football is just like those yep, movies great, and TV show. Great like atmosphere. The whole town <laughs> shuts down on Friday night um, just to go watch football. Yeah, absolutely great atmosphere. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's just a nice, sets down kind of in a bowl, kind of a yep. um, nice location. Beautiful field with the turf and everything. Yes, very much so. 
So we'll see what uh, Friday night brings. But looking at the GMC last year, Rams, Antwerp, and Snort all finished six and one. Paulding was four and three. Wayne Trace three and four. Fairview was two and five. Edgerton one and six. Hicksville was zero oh and seven. But lots of changes. Top the GMC with Antwerp graduating a huge senior class. Graduating a huge senior class that played together for a long time. And yes, about three years. You know, so Fairview bringing in a bunch of young young men that's got you know a lot of experience under their belts. Yep. Um, Obviously, they were voted the preseason favorite in the NWO Sports preseason poll. So it's going to be an interesting, fun GMC season to see yeah. who comes out on top. There's possibility of. Yeah, I, I think your dad used that, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the GMC is really just going to be a toss-up all what over the, the place. I mean, it's uh, to see the, see who steps up and comes out to the front runner. Yeah, I mean, this could be a year where the GMC has a team that finishes 5-2. and two. Yeah. I mean, I can see the GMC with two losses that actually won the conference this year. Yeah, it very well could be. I mean, last year everybody had one loss. One so loss, yeah. I could see it with everybody with having two losses. Just it's, it's Everybody's just kind of graduated some good players and stacked. You know, they've got some good players in the other positions. and um, But we'll have to see how it shakes out. That's why they play the games. That's right? why they play, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. Ayersville graduated some kids. Still got Torn Kneven back, but they lost their quarterback, graduated. Abe Delano, Abe you said, any time you lose him, good Lord, he was two people in one at times for the pilots. Yes, and sir. So he kind of jokingly asked Coach Mickey about the, the game last year, and he's just, Ugh. <laughs> I think he wants one of those plays back there, yeah. that final drive. <laughs> yeah, two plays there kind of. Yep. Now, one of those kind of surprises, I think it was third or fourth and short, and they had Delano in the backfield, and they, they threw it out in the, in, the, in the flat, and they tried to pass. Yeah. They tried to fool the Rams' defense, but I think more than anything, they fooled themselves. And it really cost them the game in the end. Yeah. Yeah, cut down there. Uh, Dominic Graziani squirted away and was able to break that big, long run off and keep that drive alive. Marsh down, got a touchdown out of it, and then obviously with – Dominic picking that ball off there at the end, and and it was a the, the final dagger. Allowed the Rams take home the victory bell. JV getting the action now. Clock's down to two ten and counting. I'm not sure what the fourth quarter is going to be, but nice for everybody for joining us here on this Friday night. Not sure who the JV quarterback is actually. Number four. It's got to be uh, is it Owen Farrell. But it says. Number four on our roster says Owen Reynolds, but I don't know if that's I don't know if that's Owen Farrell. Could I, be Owen Reynolds. Owen Reynolds could be a good freshman. Was one of your eighth graders. Yeah, he was quarterback last year, so it could very well could be him. Can't tell from here. I have to zoom oh, in. Oh right, right. Zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Fairchild, Coach Ramirez, coaching eighth grade football again. Yeah, practicing. Scrimmage last night against PH. Um, PH looked really good. Um, for the Rams, we look pretty decent ourselves. Just uh, scored a couple, scored a couple times, but uh, definitely got some things to work on offensively. Um, trying to make things a little more understandable with the, the scheme that Coach Becker wants to wants to teach the high school level. So we try to teach the same thing at the eighth yeah, level. Yeah, definitely. Just trying to make it so that the kids understand a little better. Um, I think we figured out some things there last night. Uh, kind of started talking about that a little bit at practice, but. I think we're going to go to a stone age on the way over here. I think we're going to go to a little more Coach I type offense. No. I think we're going to start throwing a tight end back <laughs> there in. There you uh, go. We just struggled to block uh, a little bit on that backside, and we'll throw an extra blocker in there and see how it works. Like uh, Coach Fairchild said, like we had, I think we probably talked. We talked off camera so much last week. Yeah, that was a great time. If you guys get a chance, go to Northwest Ohio Sports on YouTube or Facebook, Twitter. Logan's got the links everywhere. Ooh, nice play out there by Elmwood, but. Uh, we had a great time last Saturday. It flew by. Of course, the setup and the the after takedown didn't fly by, but the show itself, we had a great time. Some of those those coaches are so awesome, off camera, and you know you think football coach, big grumpy burly guys, but most of those guys, Coach Mickey, Coach Rakes, Coach I, Coach Schaefer, coming all the way from Columbus Grove. Those guys were fantastic. Coach yeah. Cooper, yeah. we could go on and on and on and talk about every single one of those coaches, but. Um, Give, give, give that a chance if uh, you guys can check that out. 
Northwest Ohio Sports on YouTube, and you can go and uh, watch that. It's about two hours long, but it, it, uh, it's definitely worth it. As Coach Fairchild said, he goes, well, I have some chance. I'm going to sit down and go back and take some notes off these coaches, which is very good because all those coaches have so much valuable insight and information oh, that when we're sitting there talking, you don't really gather it at the time, but – Goodness gracious life. Coach I gave so many good points. Coach Moeller, um, and on and on and yeah. on. So it's a, it's a very good informative watch. Coach Bach from Evergreen. Uh, yeah, he was very – uh, Coach Bach was very impressive from Evergreen. Yeah, I, lo- I love his – Absolutely. His, uh, philosophy, getting the yep. junior high kids involved. That was just a, an yep. absolute – and he's a young coach, too, yeah. from Evergreen. It's a struggling program. You know, they've had so many coaches in the last yeah. five years. that it's first first time they've had a coach back-to-back years. Yep. Like three years, four years. So – yeah, but yeah, I, lo- I really loved what he had to say about you getting the younger kids involved, which is something I try to do with the softball program, having kids come out right. and join us with the national anthem yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, the the, the the sooner you can get them involved, the better you off, I think, are, uh, as, you know, the kids get older and they see your program as a young kid, right. and you're like, hey, I want to go do that. So, Yeah, yeah that was uh, yeah, it was a great insight listening to him and how they do that and um, allowing the kids to attend the team meal. And, I mean, just yep. – I mean, how great would that be to be a young kid to be out there? Oh, you're, your, you would be like in heaven. Yeah, with your, your <laughs> high school role model kind of thing. And that's the, that's the thing. That some high school kids don't realize how much time you can be a role model to Absolutely. younger kids. And yep. you just think, oh, yeah, whatever. But some of these, you know, some of these kids that are really into the sport, you know, really just kind of dig it and they know who you are. And then, right. you know, when you say hi to them, it just kind of makes their day. Um, oh, absolutely! I agree. So to have them involved, and they go out on the coin flip and everything, he said that was that was just just yeah, awesome. Oh, just yeah. awesome. You go back to school on Monday, you tell your classmates about this. They're going to be like, well, "I want to go do that." Yeah. So you know, word of mouth, and before you know it, you got the, you know younger generation that's uh, looking forward to play football, which we need. But if you look at the numbers around the area, each coach is always well, most coaches, I shouldn't say, they're like, ah, "Kind of worried about numbers this year." You know, we lost a few, and and we're trying to build numbers up from the the lower grades and the junior high program. So. A lot of them were talking about that. It was amazed. I was kind of amazed at how many coaches were talking about low numbers. And so, yep. Mr. Michael Sebring will be on the call at 105.7 this season. How are you, Michael? I'm doing well, Keith. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Of course, Michael will be on the call for Say, let's, let's not Rams. skip over the, the Rams volleyball the headline tomorrow. Snow Rams volleyball tomorrow night. Official uh, season opener tomorrow night at home versus the Eastwood Eagles, which Keith will probably call Elmwood five or six times. Oh, you, uh, uh, especially doing this game tonight. <laughs> they call him Elmwood most of the time. <laughs> Yeah, the big, uh, <laughs> big kickoff to the fall, the official, well, they're calling it the kickoff to the fall season, even though we know golf's already been golfing for, for about like a, month. a month already. Close, but, right. Uh, a lot going on tomorrow night, introductions of all the fall sports teams, and bring the kids out and get your picture taken as you're just talking about those role models and whatnot. I remember when I, even in junior high, I remember thinking Neil Weber was oh, like a, yes. ba- was a basketball dribbling god. Yes. When I watched him, <laughs> I go to and I'd watch him do all the the it, ball handling drills and stuff. It can't be demo those. I'm like that is so awesome. And he wasn't the tallest of characters yeah, either. No, but he could dribble. <laughs> yes, but he boy, could. he could dribble. He sure could. But yes, uh, tomorrow night, as Michael said, you can get a picture taken with uh, your favorite. You know, bring bring the family out, get your picture taken with. Uh, Basically anybody, right. golf that, team, that you cross want. country, yes. cheerleading, football, they should all be there. So bring the family out. Free admission for Jeez. kindergarten K through, through six. sixth grade. Yep. So yes, tomorrow, Tenora High School, um, get on out there. Should be a fantastic night. First year that uh, we're going to try this. Coach Haggerty is the mastermind behind all this. She has this big elaborate um idea that you know if you got to park away they're going to have busing there golf yep. carts going to bring you up and everything so you know get out there and the most important part to me uh, and you know it's good to get the community involved and in all that stuff but it's going to be a fantastic volleyball game uh the Toronto rams should be a very strong team this year they're returning in the majority of the core of a team last year that won 17 games yes and uh, eastwood is always a very strong program actually led by a uh, fairview graduate uh, as the head coach over there um her name escapes me now that I brought it up, but she graduated from Fairview, and uh, she's now the head coach over there. She was pregnant last year when we played them. I remember. So I believe she's probably had that baby by now, but uh, <laughs> they, she's got a very strong team, and Eastwood should be very good, so it should be not just a fun night to generate some excitement for the start of the fall sports season, but a really entertaining and well-played volleyball match on the floor, too. We're hoping it's going to be 
a Sonora victory, but yep. you know, uh, should be a good game either way. I don't think any, either team is going to run away from either. You won't see many twenty-five to ten blowouts or anything in the sets. They should all be competitive. No, yeah, bring the family out, and hey, you still got time after the game. It's Saturday night. Watch the Rams. I don't can't remember the last time they played on Saturday night uh, for volleyball. I don't either, but they're doing it twice this year. They awesome. played De, they played Defiance in a night game as That's well good. on a Saturday. The Haggerty Bowl. The Haggerty Bowl three. Never get your facts. Will, will be a night game. That, Michael. That's right. <laughs> Haggerty Bowl three over at Tenora this year. Coach, uh, mom is so far 2-0 and against her daughter. Both five-set uh, <laughs> thrillers. Do they have a victory bell for that or something? <laughs> yeah, they don't. <laughs> Hopefully that game's not around Thanksgiving or yeah, Christmas. Right. Well, that's <laughs> what I always say. I'm like, oh, you guys are going to be speaking turns again by Thanksgiving, let's hope. Because it's pretty late in the season, so we're pushing, o- we're pushing October by then. Oh. But, yeah, it should be an excellent uh, season opener for the Rams and uh, what we hope will be a, a really good season. The seven seniors out this year. Big, huge senior class. And good. Then, uh, Very good. The two juniors that are back were both first team all conference last year as sophomores. Paige, Excellent. Paige Gamby and Tatum Krebs were both first team all GMC last year as sophomores. So. I don't think there's anything that Paige can't do. Ah, uh, that's yeah. Coach Fairchild. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> she could literally put. So I, I no disrespect for these boys out here, but if she strapped on football pads, she'd be a middle linebacker in this team. I believe that. I guarantee I tell you, it. I tell you what, I was working with her just uh, you know, back out on the last month sometime was working on some hitting and. Uh, you know, how do you change a girl who batted over 500, hit eight home <laughs> runs, struck out three times? How do you how do you adjust that? I told her, I said, you know, it, we, let's just make some small adjustments. Right. And um, she was hitting off the tee, and I, I I think she went she proceeded to hit about 14 or 15 over the fence off the tee. She hit one over top of our scoreboard. Oh my god! Off the tee. So um, the small she adjustment out, we made. She only struck out three times. Three times year? all year. She my struck gosh. out three times, and uh, Tegan Norton struck out four times. I'm so proud of Tegan Norton. Uh, the year before, she did not have the season she won as a junior. Yeah, she rebounded. And she had a great she, senior uh, season. She won my she won my uh, most most improved player because she she went from batting I think one one something and uh, she batted over 400 and wow. she struck out four times. That's I think like 197 as a junior. Yeah. So yep. just played awesome. But yeah, those girls are. <laughs> Page is Page is uh, but just Page. That's all you can say. <laughs> well, I've uh, I if I haven't found anything, she can't do well. I hope I, I've I've got her committed. I I gotta talk to her tomorrow and make sure. But I do believe my first fan stand interview for the Liberty Center Sonora game is going to be Paige Gamby's mother. Awesome. Who obviously <laughs> will be a, a house divided on that night. Yeah. She has a, <laughs> one of the best female athletes in Sonora High School and is also married to the defensive coordinator for Liberty Center's football team. Ah. So jeez. So, yeah, she, uh, I saw her at the game last year, and she was wearing, like, neutral colors. She didn't have anything green or anything <laughs> orange on. I'm like, what are you, why are you neutral? That's wear what, gray that's or white. I, you can't wear white because then you're for rooting for the away team. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I discovered that she was married to the defensive coordinator over yeah, there. So. Well, I knew they were from that area. That's where they yeah. they, they all open and roll. Because so. I believe her, her and Carrie Signs were both in neutral colors because Carrie's been a teacher, of course, over at Liberty Center for about 20 years, I believe. So. I'll be darned. They both uh, walk around, close friends, and wear neutral colors. <laughs> your employer versus your uh, home school district. So she said she had to get permission, make sure she was allowed to talk at the game. Or if we're not going to ask you strategy or defensive <laughs> <laughs> alignments or anything. It's okay. We're not going to let the cat out of the bag here. Uh, it was funny so. when we talked to Coach I last week. Coach I said, "You know, AJ asked him a question. I think it was about his uh, his offense. You know, and he was." I know you don't want to give away too much. He's like, oh, they're going to see it on film yeah. anyway. <laughs> so. Yeah, I watched the whole podcast. I yeah. saw that. Yeah, Doing my homework for the season, too. Was, I saw uh, that. Yeah, they're going to see it all on film anyway. Yeah, we had, we had a very good time. We said, like anybody that still hasn't seen that coach's show, get out there and check yeah. that out. I it just tuned great. into it a couple days ago. Yep. Go on YouTube. You can find yep. her. Very good show. We have fun. Like we said, like those coaches off air were, you know, they're, they're just full of personality. You wouldn't yeah. think about it. You see right. them on Friday nights and whatnot. You're like, yeah. but uh, Coach Mickey is fantastic. Right. Yeah. Coach Mickey went to the wrong spot. <laughs> he showed up <laughs> a little late. He's like, I don't know. I went to the same spot I was last year. Yeah. yeah. It was really interesting to hear you guys ask, you know, the kids in particular, you know, what matchup are you looking forward to? Right. Just to hear what the kids yes. really think. You know, we, we all think we know our rivalries, <laughs> but you ask the kids they, and they'll, they they'll, they'll tell you. They different, right. Yeah, a lot of the kids didn't have much to say, but every now and then, you know, we got a couple kids were a little right. talkative, which yeah. uh, makes it a little more fun. Yeah, I thought some of them did. I thought some of them did a really nice they job. They did. Others were like, they others did. Were just passing the uh, mic. Like, I don't want to say. I, that. I forget the the, uh, the kid from Hicksville who was the the middle linebacker. He was he was great. Yeah, he yeah, did a nice job. He was yeah. a really good job. 
If you'd asked them to text your answers to you, they'd probably yeah. been real good at that. Yeah, yeah. for like uh, one talking young, in person. Pages. The one young man from <laughs> Defiance did a nice job too. Yes, he did. Hutchinson or yes. something like that. Yep. He did a real nice. Yeah, job a little well. backup point guard. Yeah. Which I heard Slash that third Brogan guy. Castile could be out a week or two. Brogan Castile. Not Brogan Castile. Uh, Brogan Castile is going to be out. He's been out for more than a week or two. Yeah, for a few years. Zipful. Oh yeah, he did get hurt. Yes. Hear that, but yeah. Yeah, Brogan's gonna be out. He's uh, yeah, he's uh, graduated. He's working he's with uh, Coach Fairchild's yeah, team here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I don't know. We still got JV out there. I can't. No, tell. we're back. I think to we're getting ready we're to kick off the third quarter. Back here. to Varsity. So it's seventeen nothing. What a defensive stand there by the Rams at the end of the it half. It was. That was great. After allowing a long pass over the top, I swore that kid stepped out of bounds. Eighty-five my yard bad. touched or eighty-five yard catch. Yeah, almost good down. chase down there by Jacob Bishop. Very. Saving the touchdown. Rams defense played well in the first half. All right. Well, I'll let uh, you guys take this back over, and I'll go back to my little practice run down there with the new equipment that's very familiar because it's the same stuff you trained me on over here. Yes. And I'll <laughs> see everybody tomorrow afternoon over at Tenora High School. We'll see you, Michael, tomorrow. Take care. Make sure you tune in. So, Michael, 105.7 The Bull on Friday nights after you listen and watch us, of course. We don't give him all cred. Listen to his post-game show like I do generally on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> listen to them both if you want. Just turn, yeah, the, turn the radio right, on, turn the TV on, you can listen to them both. See how much we agree on the stuff. Rams have three receivers on the near side, one to the far side. Kraziani, shotgun formation, back to his left, inside handoff. Seven Llewellyn, I think, gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage. If anything, got a half a yard. Dr. Kayla, suntanning outside here. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we can have Dr. AJ in the next couple Friday nights. Yeah, so we just told we'll we be close. Talk, talking about that on the way over here, told <laughs> Kayla, no, 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 next Friday's out. Uh, no, no baby being born next Friday night. She's like, oh, okay, okay, I got to control over it. Baby's yeah. going to come when baby comes. Yeah, there was no, 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 not next Friday. <laughs> we need our executive producer. Pass down. Far sideline, caught the 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, touchdown. Rams number 15, who we don't have on our roster. That's a 64-yard touchdown pass from Graziani to whoever that was. Nice throw. Kind of just dropped that in the bucket over top. Bishop on for the extra point. 24. Oh, Nothing. Rams on top here with 11-11 to go in the third quarter. And we'll be back right after this timeout here on Tenor Rams Live. Drives on Pizzeria scoreboard. Rams. 24 Royals, nothing here on Snow Rams Live. Does your golf cart need serviced or need new batteries? Is your golf cart ready for winter? Chad Shock at Aftershock Carts and Equipment, located at 8144 State Route 15 here in Defiance, services all makes and models for gas and electric golf carts. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday, 9 to 5. 784 1806 and online at aftershockcarts.com. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Elmwood, Rams up 24-0. That was Dylan Shively with that 64-yard touchdown from Dominic Graziani. So Shively with that catch. Ah, technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. I wasn't expecting You've seen a little bit of a choppiness in the in the video, uh, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, AT's computer's getting too hot. With the everything so plus, we're in. using our hot spot, and there's not really the best signal out here in the middle of nowhere in the cornfields. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, <laughs> just to give everybody an insight of what our <laughs> what surroundings look like. <laughs> we literally are in the middle of a cornfield. Ever seen Jeepers Creepers? Oh, That's kind of what it looks like. I love like. that movie. <laughs> and, and Jeepers Creepers, too. I think... Two was even better. I think so, too. I agree with that. 
Bishop kicks it down to the five. So 11 9 to go here in quarter number three. 24 0 to Nora. Keith Brown, Coach Fairchild, Dr. AJ, Dr. Kayla with you on this Friday evening over here from Elmwood. So next Friday, Rams will start the season at Liberty Center. Looking forward to that. Rams defense in the first half performed exceptionally well. See if they can't carry that over to the second half here. See if they can hold on to the goose egg. Elmwood straight back drop. He's flushed. Throws it out here in the flat. Picked off. Diving interception by is that Mason McQuillan. Mason McQuillan, number one. Fantastic. First year for Mason playing football at the varsity level. Previously played golf. Oops. Sorry. So Mason will be stepping in at the wide receiver role. And defensive back vacated by Caden Ratzik and Owen Ackerman. So fantastic job by. First, first pick of the year. It's nice break on the ball there. Good job. That's one thing the Rams aren't going to be uh, shy on that. Um, Jalen Jenny is playing as well. Yeah, he's going to step in as a wide receiver, yes. Yeah. So this speed, Rams will not lack speed at the outside. So, Dr. Reggie got their stat program, which is pretty awesome. We'll check that out here in a second. We have a chance. Need to bring along a printer. We can just print stuff out. <laughs> Throw out there to flat juggling catch by Shively. Actually, who threw that? That was a little wrinkle in the offense there. What, 37 that threw that? Who's number 37? I don't have a 37. I don't have a 37. I don't have a 37. Didn't realize we took Dom out. <laughs> Dom won series in the third quarter, which we kind of talked about, actually. And yep. That was it. Oh, we need to see it, Dom. Played very well. Hand off over the left side. Minimal gain, but it could be enough for a first down by Devin Llewellyn. Just shy. Ooh, about half a yard. It's going to be third and very short. He said for those of you just popping in and out, Rams lost basically their entire rushing game outside of Graziani. Gus Weiler. And Geisinger, Llewellyn, spelled those a couple times last year and performed very well, actually, at times. So Llewellyn and Abram Jimenez will get the bulk of the carries this year. Or actually, it should be Owen Farrell, perhaps, you would think. Handoff straight up the middle. 30-25-20. The Rams have the white face mask last year? They did not. That's what I, I kind of thought. It looked a little different. Yeah, they went with white face masks. Kind of like year. that. Had the helmets all redone. Not too bad. You can check because they have a nice photo from Slapshot Sarah, Sarah Harris. So probably with a nice shot last year of the helmet. First down to Nora from the Elmwood 24, first and 10. Farrell fires over the middle. Bishop with the catch at the 15, down to the 10, maybe to the 8. It was Owen Farrell, or uh, Jacob Bishop from Owen Farrell. I think that's Owen Farrell's 37. At least that's what we're going to call him. <laughs> yeah, last year they did. Coach Fairchild did have the green. Yeah, the white pops a little. I like that. Yeah, I think the numbers and the the, the trim go like pia. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, they're they're sharp. I saw the boys walk out the other day and they had them on. I was like, man, those are nice. Bishop is your near side receiver. Cool on the far side. Well, on the handoff, breaks it through close oh. to the goal line. He's going to be just short. Well, on needed eleven. I think he got ten and a half. <laughs> Nice quickness by Devin Llewellyn. Got the ball and was like a rocket through that hole. Oh, 
for the second. Rams can actually get a first down. Second and goal. Or no, second and goal. Second and one. Second and one. From the two, get a first down at the one. Merrill hands it off to Llewellyn, tries to sneak it in, and he is Got in it. for a two-yard touchdown run. Devlin Llewellyn at the 740 mark. Puts the Rams up 30 nothing. So Llewellyn from two. Extra point coming from Jacob Bishop. Freshman Joey Cope is coming in there on uh, special teams there. Number 67. Always nice to see some of the freshmen play that you coached the previous year. Yeah, heck yeah, get them some play. This is a perfect time to get somebody else a, a break. Yep. Especially a big boy like Joey, he's hard to move, so. Yes. Farrell with the hold. Oh. Went <laughs> through. by Bishop. <laughs> Line drive does go through, as Coach Fairchild said. Not his best kick, but it counts. 31 nothing Rams, 7-17 to go. And we'll be back right after this here on to our Rams live. Schlegel Family Farms is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams. Tenora alums, the Schlegels, Chris, Becca, Kennedy, Ian, and Lucas say, let's go Rams. Hey you, are you tired of staring at the same digi colors at your home or business? Prosperity Painting is here to help change that. Prosperity Painting is a local painting contractor specializing in interior and exterior painting for residential and commercial homes and buildings. No job is too big. No job is too small for Prosperity Painting. Everything from painting, staining, epoxy floors, and wallpaper removal, Prosperity Painting is here to brighten up your life. They will make your old look new again. Check out Prosperity Painting and its amazing portfolio of work on their Facebook page. And be sure to give Mike a call for a Quote at 419-789-0939. Prosperity Painting says, go Rams. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Elmwood, Rams with a 30. I don't think they gave an extra point yet. So it's 30 nothing. I think it's 31 nothing. Should be 31 nothing. Bishop with the ball at the 40. Approaches it a little short. End over in kick. Hits it about the 26. It's picked up there. Elmwood will start first and 10 from the 40. Very nice catch there by Mason McQuillan. Devin Llewellyn took it in from two yards out. 7.04 to go here in the third. I think fourth quarter is the JV. We'll wait and see, but after the varsity's done, we'll probably just end our broadcast here. We'll, we'll see what's going on. I know the coaching staff doesn't have film access, so <laughs> early season technical problems for them as well. So keeping a little wider angle than what we normally do to try to help the Rams the, uh, a little bit. Oh, 11 view. Pitch out here. Nice play again. Boy, if we had a player of the game tonight, I think it would be number 11, Josh Lieb. <laughs> he has been all over the field tonight. He's been there almost trying to get interceptions. He's in making tackles. He's catching passes. Hey, he's just a sophomore. Three sport athlete, baseball, basketball, football. And a good three sport athlete. Very good. Very good, yes. A little mix up there Ball. by Elmwood. Ball's on the ground, picked up by the Rams. They're going to take it in. Oh, oh he's tackling it about the one. Oh, whoever this is, two has had a great yeah. game. This 42. Yeah, he picked he scooped last one. He didn't scoop and score. That one he tried to scoop and couldn't get there. Scooped it up for about the 24 and took it down to, I would say, the one. So a 23-yard fumble recovery. A little bit of mix up there on offense by Elmwood. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, all I know is uh, Bosselman kind of gave him a big old bear hug and the ball was on the ground. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> They tried a little end around sweep or something there, yeah, and somebody sure. didn't take the ball that was supposed to, and the quarterback was kind of left stuck with the bread yeah. and <laughs> the way it went. Yeah, Mr. Bossman said, hello, and the ball went flying. And we got three backs in the back. No, we got two. One comes out to the near side. So two backs in the backfield with Farrell. Farrell takes a snap, hands it off. Off the left side, going to be a little bit short. Oh, something fell. Oh, a half a yard. 
And as Devin Llewellyn again came up about half a yard short, yes. So second and goal for about the half yard line. Thirty-one nothing Rams here. Five thirty and winding here in the third quarter. See everybody next Friday at Liberty Center. Get there early if you want a good seat. One thing's nice is I think a couple years ago they cleared all those trees out from behind the visitors' yes. bench because there used to be mosquito heaven over there. Yeah, you see, they redid <laughs> all the. Farrell gives the ball to the well and takes it in off the right side of the Rams' offensive line from one yard out. Puts the Rams up 37 don't nothing. Run the, don't run the clock, but no. Oh, there they go. Say no, but the uh, scorekeeper, timekeeper's not paying attention. Oh, there he went. So Llewellyn has two touchdown runs, and Graziani has two touchdown runs. Fort Snore. Graziani has a 64 yard touchdown pass to Dylan Shively. And Jacob Bishop with a 41 yard field goal in there as well. Bishop tries this one, kicks it up, and puts it through. 38 0 Rams. 3.42 to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back on the Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard here on Snow Rams Live right after this. Time out. Matt Yost of REMAX Realty of Defiance has been the top sales agent for the past 20 years in a row and has also been Defiance's number one agent year after year. Matt is a very motivated individual who works hard for his clients, whether it be sellers or buyers. Matt currently is a six-time winner of the prestigious REMAX Platinum Club Award, which honors high-achieving real estate professionals for their service to buyers and sellers during the past year. Let Matt's 22 years of experience help you during your property search or sale, as he is fully committed to helping his clients and consumers find the home or property that is right for them. Matt serves all of Napoleon, Bryan, Paulding, and Defiance counties. Give him a call at the REMAX Realty Office at 419-784-3070 or directly at 419-438-0790. Back here at Elmwood. Rams getting ready to kick off. Bishop has the ball teed up at the 40. 38 nothing. Uh, turn around here, folks. Rams. Sorry about that. Yeah, got to uh, hire a guy to work the camera from the streets. <laughs> We're going to pay him in a, a sandwich, but the sandwich booth yeah. is closed tonight. So that's what's happened. I'm getting delirious. I can't. <laughs> Probably waited all night for uh, waited all night for a sandwich. <laughs> uh, Bishop's kick all the way back to about the four. I'm sure we're okay. I'm, I'm, anybody who knows me, I probably knows I can skip a meal or so. I'll be all right. <laughs> oh, but you're right. The last time we were here for that playoff oh, game, there were so man. many people in line for that. I was I like, think, I was like, what, what, what's the big deal? They're like, oh, if you had one of the ribeye sandwiches, you got to try them. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my gosh. I could have eaten six. I would have... If I had more money with me, I probably would have been sick when I went home. I, I think some people went back and got two. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was like he had two. I think. And it was like eating two. Oh, oh my gosh. Steak hanging over the bun. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever his idea that was, it was awesome. Which is one that's a handoff. It goes nowhere. Also about three or four. But that's one thing we talked about on the podcast as well. Last year was like each school, not each, but most schools have like a signature yeah. dish at uh, football, at the home games. Yeah, we talked about Antwerp having the fish fry. Yep, and Defiance has like just endless amount of food trucks. Yeah, food trucks. I mean, whatever you want, they have. Yeah. Slushes, ice cream, pizza, burgers, you, and they still got their concession stand open. Yeah, and Ayersville typically has the, the drop zone drop pizzeria. Zone pizzeria. Yeah. Yep, so Harold's out there for all yeah. Ayersville home games. And yes. Typically, typically get me a drop zone pizza when I go to Ayersville. I definitely would get me a ribeye sandwich coming here, but I'm not here. <laughs> Maybe I, could, maybe, I could, maybe I could talk him into putting the concession stand open it during the softball. There you go. Not just the popcorn and water. Yeah, can I go over <laughs> and get a sandwich? Second down toss. Came of about four, maybe five on the play. It's going to be third and long for Elmwood. Third and nine as we wind down this third quarter. At the three-minute mark, it's 30. Scoreboard says 37, but I'm pretty sure it's 38 nothing. The uh, Rams need to come up with something, Keith. I know, we do. Signature. Signature or something. That's a caramel corn kind of for basketball games. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, is really good when you is, walk into the gym. It's yeah. like, ooh. Very good. But. You don't need a signature dish from the. Uh, make lasagna or something. Sonora. Yeah, the little <laughs> little tiny piece of lasagna. Or I don't know, something. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Weak side blitz. 
That pass is out there. Quarterback got rid of it just in the nick of time under pressure from Alex Holmeyer. I think Holmeyer had a sacker in the first quarter as yes, well on a yep. similar play. Thought he was going to have another one, but didn't quite get there in time. I'll hit the weight room. <laughs> fourth, and, <laughs> fourth and eight for the Royals offense. Hit the weight room, pick up some more speed. Alex was our player of the game last year. Was that Edgerton, maybe? Um, or was it not Sego? Maybe not Sego. I forget. I know he was our remember. player of the game one of those one of those games. Uh, Logan down there doing post game interviews. Well, it wasn't not Sego because he tried to get Coach Becker in. Whoa, oh. the punt <laughs> <laughs> blocked. Punt was blocked by the up man for oh, that one to hit Peyton Schaefer right in the back of the oh. helmet. <laughs> also gets Ruby over here. Like adjusting the helmet, like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Not the intentions of the Elmwood special teams there, but comic relief here. Oh, geez. I just think about the one TV show we used to watch. Oh, Keith. HBO. <laughs> that was uh, First and Ten. First and Ten. I don't blocked know how to say it. This, uh, blocked it with this. Uh, blocked it with this. Well, we can't say it yeah. here. But blocked it with his butt, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Didn't block it with his butt. but uh, Oh, my word. That was great. I think Fran Tarkington was on there and a couple yeah. other football guys. <laughs> those old school shows, some of those were pretty awesome. Oh, my word. I forgot about that. <laughs> First and 10 on HBO. That was like yeah. in the 80s. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> just showing a rage there, Keith. Oh, shoot. Uh, just remember watching that video, that, <laughs> that, the kicks that you see it jiggle. <laughs> big, big dude blocks it with his uh, butt. Yeah. Boom. Uh, we have a timeout here. The old football shows. I remember uh, oh Jefferson from Ridge, Fast Time Ridge Oh, Fast Time Ridge High. After his, after yeah, his car got Charles tore up. Jefferson. After his car got tore up, he uh, tore up the other team because they <laughs> painted it up, made it look like the other team did. Spicoli was going to fix it, but he couldn't <laughs> fix it. He fixed it all right. Old man had an ultimate set of tools, but just, he didn't fix it. Yeah, he just wrote graffiti <laughs> all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. That was great. Charles Jefferson. Charles Jefferson. Smashed by Jefferson. <laughs> Uh, oh, shoot. Hopefully people watching us are at least as old as us. <laughs> they're gonna, well, if not, they're going to Google this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Charles Jefferson? Yeah, who's Charles Jefferson? Best defensive player that Ridgemont ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Better than a water boy. And if you need tickets, you can also get some tickets from Damone. Could sell you some tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Scalping. Scalping. High school tickets. <laughs> <laughs> and in motion, gets the handoff. Chipped up in the backfield. There's going to be a loss of a couple on the play there. That was uh, Brennan Jenny. Yeah. Brennan coming out for a football this season. So, just a, had a heck of a basketball season last year as a JV player as a sophomore. But like we said, with Ackerman and Caden Radzik gone, even Braden Rostai came on. Very strong in the last three, four games at the tight end position for the Rams last year. Rams receiving core basically don't have anybody left from last season. They had Dylan Shively. Aaron Carter Gilliam graduated, who was very good at times. Pass over the middle by Farrell. I think that's Josh Lee again. Well, it's going to be about two or three yards short of the first down. The flag down uh, legal motion from the Rams. Keith Brown, Dr. AJ, Coach Fairchild, Dr. Kayla here as well. Coach Fairchild, Dr. AJ has got some live stats here that we're going to use Dude. starting next week, and this is going to add a whole new. Dude, I'm telling you, he was showing me how element to, to uh, our broadcast. <laughs> This way, is great. Way above my head. I was like, whatever, <laughs> dude. You you do you. And I he was showing me the formulas and I I, I couldn't even I couldn't even count that high, I don't think. I mean he used to wait for Sean and Kirsty to tally him up and send us a text yeah. about halfway through halftime and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which was which is awesome. Yeah. And Angel individual had, stats, but yeah. have these bad boys live. Angel have them live. We'll just go to Dr. AJ for the BSN sports stats. That package brought to you by BSN Sports and Dr. AJ here. Man, we got a lot of new stuff this coming season, so um, 
I thought about going down there. I thought we should, I thought we were going to have a halftime. I was going to go down there and see about uh, our sideline cam maybe and see if we can get it to work. Just try it out here today. Right, but, right. Um, I don't know if we had time to do that yet or not. But Starting the fourth quarter here, it's 38 nothing. Rams on top of the Royals. <laughs> Looking at Coach Martin inside the <laughs> the booth over here. He's sweating like crazy. There's no air movement in there. No, there's not. <laughs> no. Well, I said when I went in there initially was looking at setup and there was there was a couple spots, but not enough for all of our stuff. And forgot our table that we a little fold up table. I think it's about a four footer. And I was like, I would have set up outside. And like I said, even though it's a little warm out here with no breeze, it's about 10 degrees cooler than it is in there. <laughs> Easily, so we'll catch a few minutes of the JV game here. And then we'll yeah, we'll catch a few minutes and probably pack it up. We'll and pack it up because our uh, our takedown is quite a bit as well. Oh boy, Rams are going to take it to the house. First play, long run by is that Cooper Replogle? number three. Yeah, first play. Wow, all the way for Cooper and. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Not sure where that ball was spotted at, but I think it was on the 40. To the 40, so 60-yard run for Cooper. 35 or 40. Yep. Yeah. So a nice run by Cooper there to start the fourth quarter for the JV. But we'll get a couple more plays in here, then we'll sign her off and We'll see everybody next Friday night from Liberty Center. Like I said, we're going to have the game, but we prefer you come over to Liberty Center and watch us so you can experience everything. Liberty Center's got new lights this year, too. Yeah. Got some uh, new LEDs. Coach Muller was talking about that. They went with the LEDs, and yep. we were able to turn them on and off. Yep, and yep. Who else got that, too? Coach Schaefer was talking about that at Columbus Grove, so we'll see that uh, next week. We're heading over there Thursday Thursday night. Thursday night, we're going to go there and Columbus watch that Grove, game. Watch that game, so. Columbus Grove and Pandora. Yep. Extra point, up, oh, good and good by the Rams JV team. So Rams had an extra score on there. 44 nothing here, early fourth quarter. So as I said, thanks everybody for joining us. And we'll pack things up here. And we'll see everybody next Friday night from Liberty Center. So thanks here to Coach Fairchild, Dr. AJ, Dr. Caleb for helping us out. But we'll shut everything down here and we'll see everybody next Friday night, live from Liberty Center, week number one. Have a good night, everybody. Clay Fote of Shelter Insurance is here to help you with all of your insurance needs. From home to car to personal to business insurance, Clay is happy to help his customers. As your shelter agent, Clay Fote can help you make sure you get the right coverage at the right price while providing the highest quality service you expect from your insurance agent. Contact Clay Fote at 419-576-5640. Clay is available for both calls and texts, or stop into the office and visit Clay at 424 Clinton Street in Defiance. Clay's hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., or by appointment. Clay Fote of Shelter Insurance.